Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, it's Josh here. We're gonna be uh, doing some studying of a track today. So uh, a lot of us up here in lake country, it's not as common in uh, farm country down south the nor northern states and uh, southern Ontario depending on your horsepower sled and stuff. Some people like to feel without it but uh, up here it's pretty much an essential that you have to have studs in your in your sled. You can get away without it but it's it's a big pain in the ass. So you can get stuck just on ice anywhere. So today we're going to be studding the track. So we ordered uh, studs, nylock nut, and backers. I ordered this special tool which I recommend getting. It's just a hollow tool with, uh, it's just cut out the one side here, hollow, and then it self ejects the, the rubber plug when you drill it. It's really good, it keeps you centered and stuff. You can just pop right through the track. For the price of it, $10, you, you can't beat it. So we'll uh, start by drilling the holes and uh, if you want studs or wanna know why you should get studs, it's because if you're on ice, your track isn't gonna grip. So if you need these, they'll dig right into the ice and you can be on your way. Or if you have a higher horsepower machine, you need more traction and I really like them for the safety of them for uh, stopping. They really, really help for stopping coming up when you're boogieing down the trail quick and all of a sudden that stop sign appears. Yeah, it's nice to have studs when you nail on the brakes and you can stop quick. Especially if there's ice, you don't go shooting across the road because it's a lot of times on trails where you come over that one hill and you don't miss a stop ahead or the stop ahead's not there. That's happened to me a lot of times and all of a sudden that road's there, you want these. They're a, a really good thing for safety, so. We picked these up at Royal Distributing for $1.99 for this package deal. They didn't send us the nylock nut that's supposed to, or the nylon nut that's supposed to come with them. Uh, I just phoned them and they're sending them on the way. We're going to put yellow backers on to complement the yellow skid in this sled. But uh, if you're looking for studs, I mean, if I was buying them and was choosing ideal backers, I would choose uh, metal, but this package deal for $1.99 was uh, like 60 cents cheaper per stud, nut, and, and uh, backer combo. So that totals up to a lot when you're buying 100 studs or 96 studs in this case, which almost snowmobile tracks run. So anyways, uh, yeah, we'll show you what, uh, what to do when you start to stud the machine. Alright, so basically when you get down here, uh, this particular sled when you zoom in, I'll, uh, I'll zoom in the camera here, but as you can see, right in here, there is uh, little round O's right here and right here, and that's where you drill. This one has it laid out on this track already. So if you don't have uh, those marks on your track and you want to stud it, you can buy a template. Yeah, so you can buy a template from Studboy or any of the major brands. It'll just be a cardboard plate or a plastic plate that sets that sits on the track and all of your uh, your lugs on your track go between it so it holds it in place and you simply drill your holes and then put it up or mark them how whatever you, method you prefer and do that. So uh, yeah, for drilling it we'll show you how to drill it and then how to put the studs on when we get the nylock washer in the mail and my, it's probably going to be a few days. So for now we'll get to drilling this. So now with uh, all of your holes drilled in the track, you can take your stud, uh, I finally got the washers in the mail. So take your uh, studs and uh, there's torque specs for these. Some guys torque them, there's different plastic ones for plastic backers, metal washers. Uh, it's all in how particular you are. I'm pretty particular with them and if you torque them I find that every single one that you torque goes in differently. Not every single one, but there's different lines on the tracks and stuff and just different spots where they go in. And I find that they're always kind of, I don't know, just in funny. So I like to just do them by feel and by looks. And I look at the backer 
and how it sucks into the back of the track because I want it to be fairly flush like you don't suck it in like crazy but just make it nice so it's not ruining your wheels as it's going around because they'll they'll chunk those wheels if they're sticking out so uh yeah to put this we'll get to putting the studs in now and I'll show you what to do so what I find is the easiest start taking your studs and just start shoving them through just push them through and uh, I usually do about, I don't know, eight at a time or something. You just keep, uh, push a whole bunch through like that. And uh, so on. All right, so with all your studs uh, pushed through, I'll show you here, I didn't film it, but uh, I decided to do 10 of them. I uh, line them all up and get all your washers put on them and uh, then go and put your nut nylock nuts on them once you got all your uh, washers on or your your backers I should say the tapered side goes up upwards uh, so I like I said eight or so I I decided to do ten here because that's what I can fit with my wrench underneath here and and my ratchet in here so uh, once we do that I'm gonna start placing the the nuts all the nuts on just start them by hand each each thread and put them all on and then I'll show you guys what you want them to look like when you tighten them down all right so with all your studs pushed through your washers on and your nuts on you can now take your socket or and your torques and you can start pushing them down so uh, I'll just do one here to demonstrate and show you what you want your backer to look like so uh, you usually just have to go until you bottom out so there it bottomed out and then I look at the back of every one and I can see that it's sticking out a little bit. So I usually just take a bit of a crack at it here. Just until it sits nice and flush in there. I'll show you guys what that, uh, what that looks like. And I'll tighten down one beside it so you guys can compare what they look like just bottomed out and what they look like when they're set in nicely. All right, so this one here is what you want. It's sucked in just nicely. It's flush with the track. You can pretty much run your finger over it. There's not too much of an indent. This one right here is just snug. And as you can see, my fingernail butts into it here and it sticks down. So you want them to be just like that, just flush so you can run your finger over it and that wheel's going to go nicely over it. I, the wheel runs right in here. It'll go nicely over there and uh, it won't interfere with anything. And uh, you'll have, it's nice and snug in there. It's not too tight and not too loose. It's, you can see it's just, just so it's pretty well flat right through there. All right guys, so we're uh, just finishing up the video now. Uh, I'm sorry, I got really sick. Uh, really didn't finish off the video the other day, so uh, I m managed to uh, putt around when I was sick and get these studs in. But uh, as you can see, uh, that's how you set the studs in in my uh, last frame that I shot there. And uh, that shows you how you want them set or in how I like to do them. Like I said, I'm really picky. That's why I don't use a torque spec, I bring them in. And uh, I know some guys would say you're picky if you're using the torque spec, but I prefer to personally look at each one and make sure every one is set perfect so it's not chewing your wheels. So there they are, all in there, and uh, she is good to go. I took it for a little spin, and man, what a difference. We bought this sled, haven't even really used it, took it for one spin up and down our driveway when we got it, because we bought it in, I think, April. And man, the thing got stuck going up and down the driveway. I, I couldn't live without studs. So really nice now. You jam on it. Lots of traction, lots of braking, even on bare ice. And uh, yeah, really happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope this showed you how to stud a snowmobile track properly. Or uh, how I like to do it. At least some people may agree that it's not proper. But it's just uh, your own opinion, your own snowmobile. If you liked uh, my videos, check out my other Skidoo 1200 videos and uh, check out my other stuff and please rate and subscribe. Really appreciate the subscription, guys. Thanks.